All right, in this video, we're going to learn how to integrate uh, functions that represent the derivative of some composition of function where we had to apply the chain rule. Now, in getting through this, recall how the chain rule works. So if I'm taking the derivative of f of g of x, I would take the derivative of the outer function first, leave the inside alone, and multiply by the derivative of the inside. So, Therefore, if I was to find the antiderivative of this derivative here, the antiderivative of that would lead me back to what I originally took the derivative of and plus c. So what we're having to do is we need to recognize that most of the time, when unless the problem has been disguised, when we are integrating a uh, derivative that required the use of the chain rule, you have a product. We have a product of something times something else where we have the outside derivative times the inside derivative. And the technique here, or the, what you're really looking for to find, is to try to figure out, well, what was the inner function? You know, what was the inner function, in this case, g of x? Because if I can properly identify that, then this second part that's going to be multiplying would represent its derivative. And once we identify the inner function, we're going to do a change of variables to try to rewrite what we're integrating to be in a much simpler form for us to find the antiderivative of. And so here in this video, we're going to use this integration method, which is called u substitution, and we're going to do it for indefinite integrals. So look here at this first problem. I want to find the antiderivative of x squared minus 1 to the third power times 2x. Well, I cannot integrate this the way it is. We have options. I mean, you could technically expand the problem, multiply the 2x, and then do your power rule, but that's a lot of work. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out, well, what would the inner function be? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to identify, I'm going to pick the very inside function. I'm going to let that be u. And sometimes a little bit trial by error, but I'm going to let u be representative of x squared minus 1. And so I want to know if this second piece here, the 2x, represents the derivative of u, which I'm going to write as du. So du is equal to, I take the derivative of my u equals, that would be 2x, and then we had the derivative of 1 is 0, and we're going to write dx here. So we're writing this derivative in differential form. And so instead of writing du over dx, we're going to just write the differential of u is equal to 2x dx. Now we go back to our problem, and we're going to see if we can't do a complete change of variables here. And so we know that x squared minus 1 is going to be replaced with u. So I have u to the third power, and the 2x dx represents du. And so here is our problem. We want to find the antiderivative of, which is much simpler to work with. I want to find the antiderivative of u to the third with respect to u. I just do power rule. So that's going to be add 1 to the exponent, divide by nu. I'm just going to write that as 1 fourth times that, plus c. And then after we do this, we're going to plug back in for u, and we'll write our final answer. So our final answer here would be 1 fourth times x squared minus 1 to the fourth power, plus some constant c. All right, we're looking here at this next problem. I want to find the antiderivative of this expression. I look at this expression. There's no way I can find the antiderivative with the way that it's currently written in terms of nothing matches our current derivative forms. So what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can't rewrite this using the u-substitution technique. I'm going to go find the inner function. And I'm doing this because I see the product of two functions of x's together. And so I'm going to let the inner function, the x to the third plus 2, I'm going to let that be equal to u. So u is equal to x to the third power plus 2. Now we take the derivative of u, and I'm going to write this in differential form. So du is equal to, I do my power rule here, 3x squared, and derivative of 2 is 0, and I'm going to have dx. So we're looking, and what we have is we have the square root of u, and the 3x squared dx is representative of du. And so we're going to rewrite this integral as the antiderivative here, the indefinite integral of the square root of u du. And then we're going to integrate. Well, remember the square root of u is the same thing as u to the 1 half power. And so I can do my power rule. So that makes u to the 3 halves 
divide by the new exponent, so that would be 2 thirds out front plus C, and then change your variables back, so substitute in for you the X to the third power plus 2, and so our answer here would be 2 thirds times X to the third plus 2 to the 3 halves plus C. All right, it takes us here to the next one. So I want to find the antiderivative of sine of 3x dx. Now, I don't see the uh, product of two functions here. Everything is inside of the sine function. The issue is, is that we uh, can't just take the antiderivative of sine and 3x and say, oh, that's negative cosine of um, 3x. It doesn't work that way. So what we're going to do is we're going to still substitute with the inner function, we'll let u be equal to 3x. And so, okay, well, that currently makes me have sine of u. Now, I still have to account for the dx part. So I'm going to take the derivative of u, so du would be equal to 3 dx. And then we're looking in this case, and we're saying, all right, well, hold up a minute. I have dx. But our problem is, is that we have 3 times dx. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take that 3 and we're going to move it to the other side so that way we can do our substitution. So 1 third times du is equal to dx. That's what we're going to substitute in for, for dx. So we have sine of u times 1 third times du. And then we would just use some properties of integrals here and say, all right, well, let's take the 1 third outside of the integral. So we have 1 third times the integral of, or the indefinite integral of sine of u du, and then we start and we go find our antiderivative. Well, the antiderivative of sine is equal to negative cosine of u, and then we have plus c because we're doing indefinite integration. We've got to have the constant accounted for on the end. Now you do your change of variables back to x's. So I'm going to plug in the 3x back in for the u. We wind up having negative one-third times cosine of 3x plus c. All right, new problem here. I have, I want to find the antiderivative of the ln of x divided by x times dx. And sometimes these can be a little complicated to look at. You don't necessarily see the product of two functions when you see the division. You could rewrite this problem to help you with that as rewriting it as the indefinite integral of the natural log of x times 1 over x dx. And perhaps that would make it easier to see what to make our substitution for. Because remember, you're going to have a function, and then you have a function times a derivative. Well, I have to figure out, well, is the 1 over x the function and the ln of x is the derivative or is ln of x going to be the function and 1 over x going to be its derivative for the way this u substitution method is going to work. I'm going to say we're going to let u be the ln of x. The reason why is because the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x and since we're writing this in differential form I'm going to have dx on the end. So that 1 over x dx is du and then ln of x is u, so we're going to rewrite our integral as the indefinite integral of u times du, which is a real simple one for us because all we have to do is the power rule. It becomes u squared divided by 2 plus c, and then we just plug everything back in because u is the natural log of x, so we have 1 half times the natural log of x squared plus c. Okay, new problem. The find the indefinite integral of cosine of x divided by sine squared of x. Now, I cannot integrate this necessarily as is, the way it's, it's written. Um, what I could do, now there's two ways to do this. You could break this apart and say cosine over sine is cotangent and 1 over sine is cosecant, and we can take the antiderivative of cosecant cotangent, um, and that's going to give us our answer because that matches our, our derivative rule almost, where the antiderivative of cosecant cotangent is, the, is negative cosecant itself. But let's practice using the use substitution method. So I need to figure out, well, what, where's the composition of functions at? We have cosine of x on the top. And in the denominator, sine squared is really, remember, just the sine function being raised to the second power. So I could let u 
be sine of x because that's the inner function, which means that the derivative of u, the differential of u, would be equal to the derivative of sine dx. So derivative of sine is cosine, and we have dx. So we look and we have everything accounted for. So cosine of x dx is accounted for there. And we're letting sine of x be u. And so we could rewrite this as 1 over u squared times du to integrate. Well, remember, 1 over u squared is the same thing as u to the negative second power. And we can do our power rule here. So I increase the exponent by 1, divide by the new, and then we have plus c, and we plug everything back in. So our answer here would just be negative 1 over sine of x plus c. And negative 1 over sine is going to be negative cosecant of x plus c. So I could integrate this using u substitution or use some trig identities to rewrite into an equivalent form. All right, new one. The indefinite integral of e to the tangent of x power times secant squared x dx. So we're trying to identify the composition of functions or what the inner function is. And so you're looking at usually what's inside of parentheses or sometimes it's what's in the denominator or what is in the exponents is where we're looking. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I cannot necessarily integrate this as is. It's not one of my uh, antiderivative uh, for formulas here. So I'm going to let u be the exponent of the e function. So u is going to equal tangent of x. du is going to equal secant squared of x dx. So when I write in differential form. And so the secant squared x dx is du, and tangent is going to be u. So we're going to do a complete change of variables here and rewrite this problem as something that's easier to find the antiderivative of. And so we're going to find the antiderivative of e to the u times du. And the antiderivative of e to the u is itself. So we have e to the u plus c. And all we need to do is replace our variable u with the function of x is representing. And so our answer here would be e to the tangent of x power plus c. Okay, next one. Find the indefinite integral of e to the x divided by e to the x plus 1 dx. So we're looking at this. We can't integrate it the way it's written, so we're going to try to do the u substitution technique. And the issue is, well, what do I let u be? In terms of strategy to look, and I mentioned this before, you're either looking for composition of functions, uh, you're looking for things that are written as the exponents, or it, my next place I would look would be a function that's in the denominator. And so I'm going to let u be the e to the x plus 1 and see how far we can get there. So we're going to let u represent the e to the x plus 1. We're going to take the derivative of this equation, write in differential form, so that would be du is equal to e to the x dx. And we see what we have accounted for. Well, we have e to the x dx right there, and the whole denominator will be u. And so we have the, uh, if we do our change of variables, our problem becomes 1 over u times du that we want to integrate. Well, the antiderivative of 1 over u is the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. And then we plug things back in, and we do our change of variables back, and so we'd have the, our answer would be the natural log of the absolute value of e to the x power plus 1 plus c. Now here's something that I can do. Since e to the x plus 1 is always positive, I can lose the absolute value. And just write this as the natural log of e to the x plus 1 plus c. Last one we have here. So the indefinite integral of x to the third power times 2 plus x to the fourth raised to the fifth. I cannot integrate this as is because I can't do power rule necessarily without doing expansion first, and it doesn't match one of my uh, integration formulas, so we're going to try to use the substitution method. We see composition of functions. Uh, we have a function inside of another function, and so we're going to let u be the inner function here, so u is going to equal 2 plus x to the fourth power. Now we're going to take the derivative of our, our substitution line, 
and we're going to write it in differential form. So du would equal the derivative of 2 is 0. The derivative of x to the fourth power would be 4x to the third dx. And then we're going to look and see what we have accounted for. So we know that 2 plus x to the fourth power is u. Now, outside of this, we have the product of x to the third power times dx, which in our du line, we have x to the third times dx, but we have that 4 that's in our way. So what we would need to do is we would need to divide the 4 to the other side. So we'd have 1 fourth times du is equal to x to the third dx. Now we can substitute for x cubed dx with the 1 fourth du and rewrite our problem. So our problem becomes u to the fifth power times 1 fourth times du. And then we're going to integrate this. I would just use properties of integrals, and I'd pull the 1 fourth outside of the integral there and call that 1 fourth times the indefinite integral of u to the fifth power du, and then do our power rule for integration. And so we'd have 1 fourth times. We would increase the exponent by 1, so that becomes u to the 6, divide by the new, so I'd have 1 6 out front and then plus c. And then we would simplify and change our variables back. So we'd end up with 1 over 24 times 2 plus x to the fourth power raised to the 6 plus c.